Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Hope you are doing fine and hope you are liking this intercompany setup series. And this is one of those videos in the intercompany setup. And in this video, we are going to understand how to create an intercompany purchase order. If you are not having an idea of how to do the setup for intercompany purchase orders, please do watch the previous two videos, which are purely the configuration videos and are available for the premium members of this channel. So become a premium member of this channel, get access to the configuration videos for intercompany setup, and that will help you to navigate further and creating the intercompany purchase orders, etc. So let's jump into the video. Now let us create a purchase order. The purchase order will be created on the vendor. In the company code AC20, the vendor is AC00. So I will give the vendor as ACS, AC00. And NB is the standard purchase order type that we have seen during our configuration as well. The purchase order is AC20 because this is the company code in which we are creating this purchase transaction. And the purchase group is ACS that I have created and company code is AC20. Now let us give the material. The material is ACS underscore sports car. And let us take a quantity of one unit. And plant is AC20 and the storage location is also AC20. Now hit enter. First thing it is asking is the price. So here if you see, it is taking PBXX as the condition type for gross sales. But we want PB00 as the condition type for the sales as well as purchase for this intercompany. Because in our configuration, we saw that both the purchasing and the sales pricing procedures are having PB00 as the common condition type. So I'll enter PB00 here and here I'll give the amount as 5 million. And we also would need to enter the same amount here because in my pricing procedure PB00 is always having a precedence of PBXX. The moment I have entered PB00, system had disabled PBXX. So now the main gross price condition type is PB00. Now one thing that we can see differently for an intercompany purchase order is this shipping tab. If you see the shipping tab, the shipping tab is enabled only for intercompany transactions or stock transfer orders. And here if you see, it is seeing that delivery type is NLCC. So the system had already understood that for this NB pricing, sorry, NB purchase order type, the subsequent step is to create a delivery type and that delivery is using the document type as NLCC. And it is also giving the shipping point as AC00, which means the system understood that this product that we are procuring in the company code AC20 is being shipped by the shipping point AC00, which is mapped to the plant AC00 and obviously which is also mapped to the company code AC00 and that belongs to the sales organization AC00, AD and AE sales area. So this is what we need to identify whether this is reflecting or not in our purchase order. If this is not reflecting, then we need to go back and check whether the configurations are correct or not. And here we can also see the customer that is created for this sales organization. So this AC20, AC20, this is the customer that is created, the intercompany customer created in the company code AC00. Now I'll we'll save this. And the purchase order is created. I will copy this purchase order or rather I will open this purchase order here. Let us display this for future reference. I will go to the transaction code VL10D. 
Here I am going to give the shipping point as AC00 because this is from where we are actually shipping this material. I will go to the purchase orders, give the purchase document and execute it. So this is the delivery. The status is not yet completed. Now I'll select this checkbox and click on background. It creates a background job which will convert this purchase order into a delivery document and the delivery document will be created in the background. So it has now completed. Let us select this and click on display. So here we can see the SD document. This SD document is nothing but the delivery document. I will go to the transaction VL02N which is the standard transaction code that we use in our O2C cycle. Try to change this outbound delivery. So now I will enter the picking details, enter the storage location AC00 and this is the picked quantity and post goods issue. Now it says that the delivery document is saved and a material document has also been created. So I will go to the document flow of this delivery and here let us select this. And here we will go to the document info and FI documents. So this is where it is a bit different from a trade transaction and a intercompany transaction. So as we discussed, because we are using a one step intercompany process, the system had posted both the goods receipt document as well as the delivery document at the same time by using just one posting of one delivery document in VL20 itself. The system had posted the accounting impact for both goods receipt as well as goods issue. So let us check, check that. It has posted two different documents, one in AC00 company code, which is a sending company code. This should be the delivery document. And this is AC20, which is the goods receipt. So let me double click this. Here if we see the inventory is credited, which means we are sending out one quantity and the COX account is debited. So this is a goods issue document. And this is the goods receipt wherein the inventory is credited because our inventory is debited because we are receiving it into the inventory. Because the standard price of the material is 6 million, if you remember while we were creating the material master, we have entered it as 6 million in AC20. And that is the reason the inventory had always taken this as the standard price and it is showing it as 6 million. But the transaction, the purchase order actually happened only for 5 million. So this is 5 million. And this difference is always going on to the PRD, which is the price difference account. It is coming from OBYC configurations. And one more thing, if you see here, this is a cross company document. That means an intercompany document. And intercompany documents always have this cross company number entered in this one. It is automatically populated. And here also, if you see, it is having this. This is the linkage between the two different company codes in which we are posting. For example, if you see this, this is the document number. This is the company code in which it is posted. And this is the fiscal year in which it is entered. The same way here as well, it is originated from this document which is the same previous one. So this is the linkage between these two intercompany documents. Because we are also having controlling objects in this one, we can also see a controlling document. So we are having a profitability segment. So it is assigned to this one. Perfect. So the next step is to post the billing document. And before we post the billing document, it is better to ensure that the IDOC setup is in place because once we create a billing document, the system will automatically issue output or generate an output or trigger an EDI IDOC, which is processed in order to post the vendor invoice. So we'll look into that setup. So I hope you have found this video useful. If so, please do like it, share it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. And as I have mentioned in the beginning of the video, I have explained the entire end-to-end -end setup of intercompany in S4HANA in a series of videos 
and I will be posting these videos on every Saturday on this channel. And the configuration videos are exclusively available for the premium members of the channel. And please do subscribe to the channel. Please join the channel. Become a premium member if you want to get access to the configuration videos. However, all the transaction data videos and the master data creation videos are available for everyone on this channel. So I hope you really find these videos useful. See you in the next video. Until then, take care.